In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. By the Sacred Heart of Jesus, and the Immaculate Heart of Mary, one with Louisa, the little daughter of the Divine Will, I enter into the Holy Divine Will. Come, Divine Will, come beat in my every heartbeat, come breathe in my every breath, come pray, adore, and reign in me. In the name of everyone and everything, past, present, and future, in, with, through, and for Jesus, Mary, and Louisa, in, with, and for all, that all may be for the glory of God and the good of all souls giving to God as if all lived in the most holy divine will. United with creation, redemption, and sanctification, praying as one in that one eternal act. For the kingdom to come, Reign on earth. Fiat. Book of Heaven, Volume 13, Part 4. October 16th, 1921. As Jesus was conceived, he made all creatures be reborn in him. As I was in my usual state, my always lovable Jesus made himself seen. All creatures coming out from within his most holy humanity. And all tenderness he told me. My daughter, look at the great prodigy of the incarnation. As I was conceived and my humanity was formed, I made all creatures be reborn in me. So, in my humanity, as they were being reborn in me, I felt all of their distinct acts. In my mind, I contained each thought of creature, good and evil. The good ones I confirmed in good. I surrounded them with my grace. I invested them with my light, so that being reborn from the sanctity of my mind, they might be worthy parts of my intelligence. The evil ones, then, I repaired. I made penance for them. I multiplied my thoughts to infinity in order to give to the Father the glory of each thought of creatures. In my gazes, in my words, in my hands, in my feet, and even in my heart, I contained the gazes, the words, the works, the steps, the hearts of each one. And being reborn in me, everything remained confirmed in the sanctity of my humanity. Everything was repaired, and for each offense I suffered a special pain. And having made all of them be reborn in me, I carried them within me through the whole course of my life. And do you know when I delivered them? I delivered them on the cross, on the bed of my bitter pains, among atrocious spasms, in the last breath of my life. And as I died, so were they born again to new life all sealed and marked with the whole operating of my humanity. Not content with having made them be reborn, to each one I gave everything I had done, so as to keep them defended and safe. Do you see what sanctity man contains? 
the sanctity of my humanity that could never bring to light unworthy children and dissimilar from me. This is why I love man so much, because he is a birth from me. But man is always ungrateful and reaches the point of not recognizing the father who delivered him with so much love and pain. After this, he showed himself all in flames, and Jesus was burned and consumed in those flames and could no longer be seen. One could see nothing but fire, but then one could see him being reborn again, and then again he would remain consumed in fire. And then he added, My daughter, I am burning. Love consumes me. The love, the flames that burn me, are such that I die of love for each creature. It was not of pains alone that I died, but my deaths of love are continuous. Yet there is no one who gives me his love for refreshment. October 18, 1921 The disturbance of the soul is night and it prevents the sun, Jesus, from rising. Disturbance is nothing other than lack of abandonment in God. I spent a day distracted because of some things I heard that is not necessary here to say, and also a little disturbed. And as much as I tried, I could not manage to free myself. So for the whole day I did not see my sweet Jesus, the life of my soul, as if the disturbance were a veil that placing itself between me and him prevented me from being able to see him. Then at dead of night, my mind, tired, calmed itself, and my lovable Jesus, as if he were there waiting, made himself seen and sorrowful told me my daughter today with your disturbance you have prevented the sun of my person from rising in you disturbance is cloud between me and you that prevents the rays from descending into you and if the rays do not descend how can you see the sun if you knew what it means not to let my sun rise the great harm for you and for the whole world, you would be well attentive never to trouble yourself. In fact, it is always night time for disturbed souls, and at night the sun does not rise. On the other hand, it is always daylight for the peaceful ones, and at whatever hour I, my sun, wants to rise, the soul is always ready to receive the good of my coming. Besides, disturbance is nothing other than lack of abandonment in me. And I want you so abandoned in my arms that you must have not even one thought of yourself, and I shall take care of everything. Do not fear. Your Jesus cannot do without taking care of you, keeping you defended from all. You cost me much. Much have I placed in you. I alone have the right over you. So if the rights are mine, the custody shall be all mine. Therefore be at peace and do not fear. October 21st, 1921 Everything that Jesus did and suffered is in continuous act of giving itself to man. All the remedies needed for the whole of humanity are in his life and passion. The soul in the divine will receives the fragrances of the divinity. I was thinking about the passion of my sweet Jesus, and upon coming he told me, 
My daughter, every time the soul thinks about my passion, remembers what I suffered, or compassionates me, the application of my pains is renewed in her. My blood rises to inundate her, and my wounds place themselves on the way to heal her if she is wounded, or to embellish her if she is healthy, and all my merits to enrich her. The traffic she produces is surprising. It is as if she placed everything I did and suffered in a bank and collected twice as much. In fact, everything I did and suffered is in continuous act of giving itself to man, just as the sun is in continuous act of giving light and heat to the earth. My operating is not subject to exhaustion. If the soul just wants it so, and as many times as she wants it, she receives the fruit of my life. So, if she remembers my passion twenty, a hundred, a thousand times, so many more times shall she enjoy the effects of it. But how few are those who treasure it? With all the good of my passion, one can see souls who are weak, blind, deaf, mute, crippled, living cadavers, such as to be disgusting, because my passion is put into oblivion. My pains, my wounds, my blood, are strength that removes weaknesses, light that gives sight to the blind, tongue that loosens the tongues and opens the hearing, way that straightens the crippled, life that raises the cadavers. All the remedies that are needed for the whole of humanity are in my life and passion. But the creature despises the medicine and does not care about the remedies. And this is why one can see, in spite of my redemption, the state of man perishing as though affected by an incurable consumption. But what grieves me the most is to see religious people who tire themselves out in order to acquire doctrines, speculations, stories. But about my passion, nothing. So many times my passion is banished from the churches from the mouths of the priests. Therefore their speech is without light, and the peoples remain more starved than before. After this I found myself in front of a sun, whose rays poured all upon me, penetrating inside. I felt invested in such a way as to feel myself prey to the sun. Its vibrating light did not prevent me from looking at it. And every time I looked at it, I felt a greater joy and happiness. Then from within that sun, my sweet Jesus came out and he told me, beloved daughter of my volition, like sun, my will inundates you. You are nothing other than the prey, the amusement, the contentment of my volition. And as you immerse yourself in it, my will pours upon you, like solar rays, the fragrances of my sanctity, of my power, wisdom, goodness, and so forth. And since my will is eternal, the more you try to be in it, and make it more than your own life, the more you come to absorb within yourself my immutability and impassivity. Eternity, like wheel, spins around you, so that you may take part in everything, and nothing may escape you. And this, so that my will in you may remain honored and fully glorified. To the first daughter of my will, I want nothing to be lacking. 
not one distinction that belongs to me, that may make her be distinguished before the whole of heaven as the first beginning of the sanctity of living in my will. Therefore be attentive, never go out of my will, that you may receive all the fragrances of my divinity, so that letting all that is yours come out, I may confirm all that is mine, and my will may remain in you as center of life. October 23rd, 1921 the truths about the divine will are channels that are opened from the sea of the divine will for the good of all creatures. I was feeling all immersed in the divine volition, and my lovable Jesus on coming told me, Daughter of my will, look into your interior. How peacefully flows the immense sea of my will. But do not think that this sea has been flowing in you for a short time, because you hear me speak often about my will. But for a long, long time, as my usual way is to act first, and then to speak. It is true that your beginning was the sea of my passion, because there is no sanctity that does not pass through the harbor of my humanity. In fact, there are saints who remain in the harbor of my humanity, while others move beyond. But then I quickly grafted the sea of my will, and when I saw you disposed, and you surrendered your will to me, mine took life in you, and the sea kept flowing and growing always. Each additional act of yours in my will was a greater growth, I spoke to you little about this. Our wills were linked together and understood each other without speaking. And then by just seeing each other, we understood each other. I delighted in you, feeling the delights of heaven in nothing dissimilar to those that the saints give me that are such that while I delight them, they delight me. Being immersed in my volition, they cannot help but give me joys and delights. But my happiness was not complete. I wanted other children of mine to share in such a great good. Therefore I began to speak to you about my will in a surprising way, and as many truths, as many effects and values as I spoke to you. So many channels did I open from the sea for the good of others, so that these channels might give abundant water to all the earth. My operating is communicative and always in act, without ever stopping. But many times these channels are covered with mud by creatures. Others throw stones into them and the water does not flow. It flows with difficulty. It is not the sea that does not want to give water, nor is it the water that cannot penetrate everywhere because it is not clear, but it is the side of creatures that opposes such a great good. Therefore, if they read these truths, if they are not disposed, they shall not understand a thing. They shall remain confused and dazzled by the light of my truths. For those who are disposed, it shall be light that lights them up, and water that quenches their thirst, in such a way that they shall never want to detach themselves from these channels because of the great good they feel, and the new life that flows in them. Therefore, you too should be happy to open these channels for the good of your brothers, neglecting nothing about my truths, be it even the littlest, because as little as it might be, it can serve one of your brothers to draw water. So, 
be attentive to open these channels and to content your Jesus, who has done so much for you. October 27, 1921. The divine will must be like the soul to the body. I was saying to my always lovable Jesus, it has been a long time since you put me inside of you. I felt safer. I shared more in your divinity, and as if the earth did not belong to me, and heaven were my dwelling. How many tears did I not have to shed when your volition would put me out? The mere sensing the air of the earth was an unbearable weight for me. But your will would win, and I, bowing my forehead, would resign myself. Now I feel you always inside of me, and when I become delirious for seeing you, by just moving in my interior, or putting out one arm, you calm me and give me life. Tell me, what is the reason? And Jesus, my daughter, it is right. After I carried you in my interior for my whole life, it is your duty to carry me in your interior for your whole life. And if I placed you in my interior, it was in order to perfume your soul and extend in you a new heaven, so as to render it a worthy dwelling for my person. It is true that you felt safer, and joys poured down upon you, but the earth is not a place of delights. Pain is its heritage, and the cross is the bread of the strong, more so since, having to establish in you the center of my will, it was necessary that I live in you and serve you as soul to the body. My will could never descend into a soul in a singular way and outside of the ordinary, if she did not have her distinct prerogatives just as with my beloved mamma. I, eternal word, could not have descended had she not had her distinct prerogatives and the divine breath had not breathed into her as into a new creation, to the point of rendering her admirable to all and superior to all created things. The same in you. First, my humanity wanted to have stable dwelling in order to prepare you. And then, like soul to the body, it is giving you the life of my will. You must know that my will must be like the soul to the body. See, this happens also within us, in the three divine persons. Our love is great, infinite eternal. But if we did not have a will that animates and gives life to this love, our love would be without life, without works. Our wisdom gives of the incredible. Our power can crush everything in one minute, and in another minute it can redo everything. But if we did not have a will that wanted to manifest the mastery of our wisdom, as it manifested it in creation, in which it ordered and harmonized everything together, and with its power it pinned it up in such a way that it cannot move one bit, both wisdom and power would have had nothing to do. And so with all the rest of our attributes. Now, in the same way, I want my will to be like soul to the body. The body without the soul is without life. Even though it contains all the senses, it cannot see, nor can it speak, hear, or work. It is almost a useless thing, and maybe even unbearable. But if it is animated, how many things can it not do? 
Yet, oh, how many render themselves useless and unbearable because they are not animated by my will. They are like those electrical installations without light, like those machines without motion, covered with rust and with dust, and almost impotent of motion. Ah, how they arouse pity. So anything that is not animated by my will is a life of sanctity that comes to be missing. This is why I want to be in you like soul to the body, and my will shall make new surprises of creations, giving new life to my love, new works and mastery of my wisdom, and giving new motion to my power. Therefore be attentive, and let me do, so that I may accomplish my great design, that the creature be animated by my will. October 29th, 1921 Meanings and Effects of the Imprisonment of Jesus I spent last night in vigil and my mind would often fly to my Jesus, bound in prison. I wanted to embrace those knees that staggered for the painful and cruel position in which the enemies had tied him. I wanted to clean him of that spit with which he was smeared. But while I was thinking of this, my Jesus, my life, made himself seen as though within thick darkness, through which one could barely see his adorable person. And sobbing, he told me, Daughter, the enemies left me alone in prison, horribly bound in the dark. Everything around me was thick darkness. Oh, how this darkness afflicted me. My clothes were wet from the filthy waters of the stream. I could smell the stench of the prison and of the spit with which I was smeared. My hair was disheveled without a pitying hand that would move it away from my eyes and from my mouth. My hands were bound by chains, and the darkness did not allow me to see my state. Alas, too painful and humiliating. Oh, how many things did my state, so painful, tell in this prison. I remained in prison for three hours. With this, I wanted to rehabilitate the three ages of the world, that of the law of nature, that of the written law, and that of the law of grace. I wanted to unprison all, reuniting them all together, and give them the freedom of my children. By remaining there three hours, I wanted to rehabilitate the three ages of man, childhood, youth, and old age. I wanted to rehabilitate him when he sins out of passion, out of his will, and out of obstinacy. Oh, how the obscurity that I saw around me made me feel the thick darkness that sin produces in man. Oh, how I cried over him and said to him, Oh, man, it is your sins that have thrown me into this thick darkness which I suffer in order to give you light. It is your evils that have smeared me like this, and their darkness is such as to prevent me even from seeing them. Look at me. I am the image of your sins. If you want to know them, look at them in me. Know, however, that on the last hour that I spent in prison, 
the dawn broke, and a few glimmers of light entered through the fissures. Oh, how my heart breathed in being able to see my state, so painful. But this signified when, man being tired of the night of sin, grace, like dawn, draws around him, sending him glimmers of light to call him back, so my heart heaved a sigh of relief, and in this dawn I saw you, my beloved prisoner, whom my love was to bind in this state, and who would not leave me alone in the darkness of this prison, waiting for the dawn at my feet. And following my sighs, you would cry with me over the night of man. This relieved me, and I offered my imprisonment to give you the grace to follow me. But this prison and this darkness contained another meaning. This was the long stay of my imprisonment in the tabernacles. The loneliness in which I am left, such that many times I have no one to whom to say a word or send a gaze of love. Other times I feel in the Holy Host the impressions of unworthy touches, the stench of rotten and muddy hands, and there is no one who touches me with pure hands and perfumes me with his love. And how many times the human ingratitude leaves me there in darkness, without even the miserable light of a lamp. So my imprisonment lasts, and shall still last. And since both of us are prisoners, you prisoner in bed only for love of me, I prisoner for you, and with my love I want to bind all creatures with the chains that keep me bound. We shall keep each other company, and you shall help me to extend the chains in order to bind all hearts to my love. Then afterwards I thought to myself, how few are the things that are known about Jesus while he has done so much. Why have they spoken so little about all that my Jesus has done and suffered? And coming back again, he added, My daughter, everyone is stingy with me, even the good. How much stinginess they have toward me. How many restrictions. How many things they do not manifest of what I tell them, and they comprehend about me. And you, how many times are you not stingy with me? Each time you either do not write what I tell you, or do not manifest it, is an act of stinginess that you use with me, because each additional knowledge that one acquires about me is one more glory and one more love that I receive from creatures. Therefore be attentive, and be more generous with me, and I shall be more generous with you. You have reached the end of the Book of Heaven, Volume 13, Part 4. Fiat. Dearest Lord Jesus, I thank you for your lessons of today. Free me from living one single instant outside of your will. Have pity on me and do not permit that I either know or acquire any other life except that of your divine will. Fiat et Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.